Team Liquid picking blue for both of their side choice games on two and four. So we'll right. see as that unfolds throughout the series. Let's see if we get ourselves another nice, fun one going on here. Picks and Bands going to be starting out. Like I said, we don't have the graphics on the screen just now, but right now Maokai and Scion have been banned by Team Impulse. Mm -hmm. Rumble has been banned by Team Liquid. We'll see what else they get out here. Everybody that's played against and Impulse went three towards the top lane. If it wasn't Morgana last, it was Morgana last, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> they just kept going to ban out Impact. We'll see if they do it again. Well, that's what happened in the previous set against Impact. It was just constant top lane Over bans. and over. But that's the thing, is Rush doesn't play these high-priority champions like Sejuani just yet, so you can leave those open. Yeah, okay, so just to recap you guys for the picks and bans, because yep. we don't have them on the screen right now, the total bans for Team Impulse are Maokai and Scion away from Quas and Urgot away from Phoenix. Meanwhile, for Purple Team, Rumble, Hecarim, and Morgana, three impact-focused bans <laughs> here in his top lane pool. These are the exact same three bans against Team Impulse that TSM did in their yeah, three over victories. and over. The three games that they ended up winning. And when you say that, you mean all three games. Yes, I mean all three <laughs> games they won. But look at this. Rush found himself a new tank jungler. He had played Nunu so often in last year's, but he's learned the Gragas. And I know you're a big proponent of Gragas being the tank jungler that the mm -hmm. fighter jungler should learn first and that he's got some similarities mm -hmm. there. He's very similar because he takes over the early game. His level three is extremely potent. And I think this is champion that Rush is going to fit right into his playstyle. He got crushed by Santorin's Gragas, and I think it's going to transition into the late game as a tank very easily for him. Well, we've seen it produce a lot of fights. We also saw it just in the EULCS putting up some big numbers. Rek'Sai and Nautilus to get locked in here for a special and dominate to start things off. Kind of saying naysay to the tank junglers. Yeah, the Sejuani's left open, and this signals to me that Dominate is going to try to match Rush's aggression right. and gank and upset right. these lanes. Center Hulk Rek'Sai most likely going to be pretty interesting to watch for here. Interesting to see which champions have been adapted to that style and, you know, still get some early game pressure as well. The global pressure also nice. No bot lane bans whatsoever. Maybe you can count Urgot as that, but Expelsha really wanting Nautilus blind pick for himself. Impulse do not typically rely on their bottom lane here, but they've got to deal with hooks down there. Nar already grabbed, and they are going to play Callista for Apollo here. We don't see him normally be a high-impact player, but he's already set up for this. Come on, baby. Give me that cannon support. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real good chance. But no, that Nar getting picked up. Very nice for them as well with that Rek'Sai pickup. The Nunu is left open. Something Nunu and Sej. Nunu, Sej. I feel like that's the first two things that Dominate's just been going for over and over again. So interesting to see what Team Liquid will totally come out with here. Yeah, it could be a top lane Rek'Sai. You know, that, that is actually pretty good with the mm -hmm. smite. But yeah. the thing here is I love that Nar pickup because the big top laner that's left that's actually aggressive is Shivana. And Nar counters yeah, the TP point. smite Shivana at this moment. So the fact that they're blue side and they don't get that counter pick, they just pick a powerful champion that would be the counter if they pick Shivana first. Yeah, I think it's very smart by Impulse to make sure Impact gets a strong laner who can bully, yeah. who can have split push presence. It's one it's of the Impulse's... Lane. Oh, it's a huge lane for Impulse. I mean, the Rush Impact duo lane is the core duo lane yeah. for Impulse overall, really. And yeah, getting that early pick, which again, surprises me that Rek'Sai was picked so early by Dominate that Champion would be uncontested at this point, and they allow Impulse to get an important top laner. Woo! But here comes a bunch of scaling. Well, hot damn. Vladimir and Vayne picked up. You don't know where that Vladimir is going to go either. Quas played a game of it previously. Yeah. in their quarterfinals against Gravity. So we'll have to see if that goes to Phoenix or Quas. So they get to have that kind of diversity there. I really like how uh, Red Side can pick a flex pick kind of late and then say, we can make, like, you either have both your lanes counterpick the Vladimir, which is pretty hard to do, uh, or Liquid gets to put that champion wherever they want in the lane and then counterpick whatever one's left over. The Vayne, though, for Piglet. Vayne Nautilus. There's a lot of setup there, a lot of peel for that Vayne from one single champion. You don't have to actually get a whole bunch of team members mm -hmm. like draft a jungler that's going to peel. Nautilus does a lot himself. He's got four types of CCs. Yeah, they have good AoE as well with the Vlad there. So something around that composition would be nice for Team Liquid as they now take a final glance at what Impulse can put together. Xiaowei Xiao's Orianna came up very, very big versus Team Solo Mid. Can they do it again now as they take the Thresh and the Ori? It's the safe pick there. You don't know what you're going to be playing it into, so that's, pick something yeah. that's really easy to farm with. And it's good against Vladimir in the specific matchup here. So Phoenix either gets into a bad matchup himself or mm. they shove it off to Quas. And I know a lot of people don't really like top lane Vladimir due to the fact that he can't really bring Ghost reliably, so maybe this is exactly what Impulse yeah. is happy about here, letting Phoenix get that Vladimir that we'd seen so many teams ban away from him. Liquid now to make their last final choice. And the thing is, they don't have a lot of 
defensive fallback. Their wave clear is pretty bad. Their siege isn't very strong as well. So all they can do right now yeah. is open field team fights. And maybe they can supplement that in some way. A split push would help break the map up and allow them to play more of a team fight style. I'm really worried about the wave clear from Team Liquid because it's all right now, it's split push Vladimir. Yeah. And they need something else that's going to be able to club, clear waves if they get behind a little bit. But the Zed there to try and lock down Piglet. And also, it's a pretty decent matchup in that mid lane. Ori has that skill matchup, though. All right, so coming into this game, do you guys think both teams so far, game one, even though they kind of got some leg room to work with, have gotten teams that they can actually work this series? This is very interesting because Impulse, right, they got their, their, their core of impact on a good champion. Yeah. Rush learned Gragas, that's huge. And a really big surprising thing is that Apollo's is on Kalista. And this is not normally what we see come out of this team Impulse bottom lane. It's normally utility bottom lane, Sivir, Leona, Annie, the big champs you see from these guys. And so uh, a very new look for them. Team Liquid, meanwhile, they actually are enabling their solos to carry. They've got Vladimir in the top lane, Zed in the middle to go do crazy things. So both these teams have done something different now. They're actually stealing a lot of things away from each other, too. When you pick up the Nautilus first round on blue side, mm -hmm. or on red side, taking the Callisto away is imperative because Callisto Nautilus is actually a very good combination, too, because when they start yeah, getting in there, all that <laughs> peel. And then they pair it with a Vayne, too. So this is actually just a lot of diversity that we're seeing in Champion Select over the, what they performed in the semifinals. And a lot of pressure now that goes on to Piglet with that pickup as well. He gets his vein the first time. Something that's usually just hovered. Everybody cheers. Yeah. And then he goes back to something else. But this time, he gets the vein. And we're going to see what happens. He gets to go up against his old buddy Impact to see who is now on the better <laughs> team. Remember to keep updating your series predictions throughout today's games. Tweet hashtag TIP win or hashtag TL win to at LOL Esports. We'll be checking in periodically as usual to see which way you're voting. Already the people are voting for Liquid on this one. Are you voting with or against them? We'll see. And we are about to be onto the rift. This is our first matchup, third, fourth place. It's going to be Impulse versus Liquid. All right, here we go, guys. The team's leaving the gates. And you've always got to ask, Team Liquid, is this the year they break the curse? Is this the year they finish higher than fourth place for the first time since 2012? If it doesn't, you got to wonder who's infected, who's got it. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, there's no one remaining from that original roster except, I think, Dominate. And even then, actually, in, true. In, in 2012, it was Saint, I'm pretty sure. So. <laughs> I guess it's Liquid Woman 2 himself. It's yeah. his fault. None of these players have been above fourth. Except for Special. He's been above fourth before. Yeah. Maybe he's going to bring him up with him. I mean, Piglet won Worlds once. That's true. NALCS. NALCS. <laughs> we'll see what they have for each other in the beginning. No impulse. Doing very well if they can get a lead within the game. But when we see them from behind, it doesn't work the same. They're not really able to fix what's happening. We've seen Team Liquid be able to kind of right that instance a few times. But... Impulse with the first lead will definitely be big trouble here for Liquid. The I mean, other way around, Liquid still has some room. And I do want to pay a whole bunch of attention to the junglers and the AD carries <clears throat> in these games. Because yeah. the junglers, both are on very early aggressive junglers. And Rush with the Gragas, like Freak said earlier, is a great pickup for him. The fighter mm -hmm. jungler. I want to watch his path, and I want to see how these AD carries on these very <sighs> mobile guys play these team fights out. And the matchup itself as well, if they ever do do battle these two marksmen, uh, it's a really tricky fight. Whoever's ahead pretty much guaranteed wins because the chasing power is really strong for both those. So that'll be a very fun matchup to watch over time. Looks like Team Impulse will be starting out the Sentinel and a quick drop start. Same yep. thing for Team Liquid here and there, a dual lane. So it is going to be a lane swap overall. Looks like the top laners are also helping the junglers on their respective sides of the map. So a very equivalent starts right here. So slow movement looks like Special will actually join lane here as we get the roam from Adrian. Let's see who he can figure out here in the early part of the game. We've definitely seen early level two roams from a Thresh, and it looks like yep. they want to focus down onto Phoenix this time. Maybe get a flash out. Flay is there. That's the slow. He is level two already, too. They gave him the Gromp. He's going to go for the backwards. He did play. get the it. Hook. He did get it. the hook. Phoenix juking no! back and forth. Lands hook, but Shao Shao doesn't have really the damage to follow up. So but it close. does mean Phoenix will have to chug all three potions to stay in lane. Doesn't even have to use a summoner spell to get away, but they don't even He's use so a summoner calm. spell to close the distance either. He took exhaust for that Zed in the late game, so he doesn't have that early ignite to help blow through his HP bar. And Shao Shao with Barrier for the same kind of reason. He's afraid of Zed. If it was actually like Exhaustic Knight both burned, they would have forced Phoenix yep. to flash. But yep. they save it. It's just a lane lead right now for Shao Shao. 
Well, Phoenix knows he'll get a little bit more attention. We'll see if he can actually keep himself safe from here on out. Now that he has the shadows, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And they continue to just go safely through the jungle. That's knowledge, though, to Team Liquid. that They have kind of weathered the storm early, and now they can try to make a move or still play safe. And that's something, too, in the mid lane. Xiao Wei Xiao, in the previous se mm -hmm. uh, series, he wasn't getting help in the mid lane. He was just left to farm, left to his own devices, and now they're actually putting resources into him in the mid lane. See what he can do with that. But look at this down bottom. They see this, though, rushes around. And this is actually really good for Team Impulse. You know, nice little bug. Okay, whatever. All they're doing is buying time, though. They actually managed to get down to this turret in time to not get, like, 4v2'd and forced off. This is something that Impulse was actually slow on in their game against TSM. They had to give up a lot of pressure on the turret, and Impact got behind because of it. This time around, Quas TP's in. He will get XP for himself, but either way, no dive happens. Apollo gets to shove in, get some turret damage. Dyrus. Given a few cents on how the match will go, thinking actually it's Impulse that has the upper hand coming into this game. But tilt is definitely a big thing, and we've seen a lot of these series now go five games. And Disagreeing that, that plays on the mentality. Yeah. <laughs> Bjergsen said it was going to be a liquid game here, so. That's true. Dissension in the ranks of Team Solo Mid. <laughs> a preview of things to come for the finals. Oh, boy. So this game still. Just about even, even with a little bit of pressure towards the mid lane. Adrian has joined now with Impact in the bottom. He's about to gnaw out, so Piglet's going to give himself some room. And pretty much safety around the map to start things off. I don't feel like we're going to get, obviously, too much jungler intervention with the 2v1 swap. So slow to start. You can 1v1 better here in the mid lane, though. The one point matchup, I feel like, early on is really a lot better for Kalista against Vlad. There's really no items on Quas right now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Impact's on a ranged champion, so that two-on-two -two of Adrian Impact is actually pretty decent, um, considering that Piglet can, if he's not under his turret, is definitely available to be assaulted. So uh, I, th I feel like this lane matchup overall goes a little bit in the favor of Team Impulse. Yeah. But we'll see if it actually goes that way. Yeah, well, they, they have a lot of presence from the support in the bottom lane, though, so there's always no yeah. pressure when you have the Nautilus alongside the vein, whereas in the top lane, the Callista solo killing the Vladimir is kind of a, a dream. I'm interested yeah. to see if Callista gets big for them as well. Apollo lately has been on that Sivir, a lot of utility for the team, really playing kind of on the back burner role, where during the season you'd see him on graves and whatnot, getting quite a bit of kills in the fight with the team. So back on to kind of putting some priority on him to carry the game as well. We'll see yeah. how that works for Team Impulse. The thing is, Apollo was... I would say the best player on the team in the very beginning of the season. Rush was still learning to play competitively. Mm -hmm. Impact had an acclimated well. And it was actually the dual lane of Impulse that was carrying the weight the first half of the split. As time went on, the solos of uh, Impulse got a lot better. But in the playoffs, actually, I feel like Apollo and Adrian underperformed compared to the regular season performance. Right. Uh, and we actually saw that in the semifinal games as well, where they had kind of some rough games in there. It's interesting to see that they are now in the third place match and they're putting weight back onto the TIP bot lane. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I do hope they do well here. I think a lot of the synergy has been coming down with Apollo and Adrian. You've seen that lane is really Apollo is the supplemental damage and then Adrian is the playmaker, mostly of the team, too. Him and Rush kind of synergize to start those fights off and get the team fights going. Impact's in danger, though. Special threatening the dive. Impact about to hit Mega Nar. They realize they cannot dive that anymore. All in, Shall though, for Phoenix. Yeah, the death mark already used. Oh, nice! Jumps back off the death mark, dodges mm. the shockwave. Sometimes you tell yourself not to alt, but then you alt anyways. <laughs> it's it's a mental fight as an Orianna when you play against the Zed. They're just trying to get each other's potions right, early because right. nobody's using any summoner spells. Nobody's really going for that all in. Well, I want to see what the recalls are like because Xiao Wei Xiao still has potions and the Zed does not. Oh, Dom, Dom off on the wings. Oh, the smite's there. Not a lot of mana for Xiao Wei Xiao to fight back, but Rush is, so he can start to put a little bit of pressure back on the lane. See if anything happens in the outsides. Actually, from the outside to the inside comes Adrian. So they don't actually go aggressive with the knowledge of the junglers to the side lanes. It's all here in the middle. Yeah, a lot of action in this mid lane. And this is something that Team Liquid, near the end of their set that they lost in the semifinals, they were taking Phoenix off of carries. He's back on the Zed, and now they're back to putting resources into him. So this is going to be a very mid-centric game here for both these two teams, even though that wasn't how yeah. they were playing at the end of their semifinal matches. Well, it's interesting because, yeah, mid's important, but, like, all these lanes have the ability to take over the game, right? It's it's a Callista and, like, a Vayne, right? It's a Vladimir running around. Like, there's there's a lot of things to track here. It's a much less simple game than a lot of the games we've seen before yep. where you had very obviously, like, this is the one carried to deal with. So uh, it, it is going to be a very complex game to keep watching and, and see how it goes. Impulse sitting on the smallest of leads here, 300 ahead. Neither team feeling like they can rush for a dragon is actually Impulse 
this late on feel like, okay, we got the BF sword on the Callista, let's swap back to the bottom lane. Dragon control is now a thing that's important right here. Yeah. Callista very good at securing it as well. This is going to be interesting. Dominate looks like he's going for the warrior enchant here on Rek'Sai as oh, opposed to the Cinder Hulk. Seems like it's a European thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when in Rome. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, is if you get fed early on and around that level 6 to 9 area, it's completely safe to get that warrior enchant. But if you don't get anything, the Cinder Hulk is better because your damage falls off pretty, pretty severely as Rek'Sai, and you don't feel that much of a difference between taking the warrior and not taking it. Yeah, later on, Flat Armor Pen meaning a whole lot less as time goes on in League of Legends. I really want to see how the mid lane and bot lane pushes in right now because I feel like Dragon is on the table very, very, very soon. The Impulse Duel lane is pushed into the turret. They don't have great ward coverage to watch for Rex size, though. So this Warrior Enchant I Will Dominate has a chance of turning things around. Ward of the River right now means Impulse is fairly safe, but looks like that just timed out. And he's heading down. Dominate said, just come over to help. I'll still take blue. He's going for the oh, wow. crab control. Yeah, Red's still it. Dragon, like you said, Dragon's still on the table, so he wants to start securing this for him. Rush, you know, he likes to make those early moves. Shouldn't be too bad. Liquid actually got Cutlass on both Phoenix and Piglet, so grouping for that would be pretty powerful for them right now, as you only see the Seekers for Shao We Shao. He doesn't really have a huge burst and damage off that. More attention towards mid. He does have Flash and Barrier still, though. Shields himself. There's the knockout coming on in. Shao Wei Shao gonna take the death mark as well. A lot of damage coming through. Phoenix forces the flash and barrier off Shao Wei Shao. Nicely done. Some trading in the top lane though. Quas just out. laughing it off. Watch out. Nice to the wall by oh, impact. Quas still sad. having Sanguine Pool. He won't be able to get that off there, or will choose not to rather. And he's gonna be going back. Teleport's up for him, but that was a good hit by Impact. They kind of have control of the map here. Unfortunately, not in any other lanes for the time being, so no Dragon can really come off of this. No, it's actually a totally fine fight for Team Liquid. Quas hadn't right. backed in a very long time. Now he's got Revolver. He can... I want to see if he teleports or walks to lane. Okay, good. Makes the right choice. Walks to lane. He knows, again, this Dragon is... As soon as one team gets a big rotational lead, Dragon goes down right away. Impact, right, Dominate Force top lane. His ulti's down mm. for now, but I guess he's going to be okay. But it's very contentious. I think the bottom side of the map, people are like, how many resources can we spend while not giving this away? Well, now that they're matching up, we'll see if any kills are given away here. Still a deathless game as we approach 11 minutes in. Only a bit of a 300 gold lead here towards Impulse as we see what the matchup will do. We are going to get Phoenix to back in the mid lane. He's got quite a bit to spend. See if he can come back and make an impact here. And the scary thing here, you said there's no kills just yet. Right. If Impulse doesn't get any kills, this is a very late game scale, scaling team comp here from Team Liquid. If they're allowed to just get through the laning phase, no problem. Vladimir plus Zed plus mm -hmm. Fane. That's a really scary composition in the late game. But they don't have that much wave clear. They'll split push you to death, though. They can 1 3 1 you fairly easily. Lack Whoa. of wards. He's afraid of the flash knock up there. Just takes a flash down, doesn't want to risk anything because Rush is soloing this dragon. So that's a really yeah. nice sneak by Impulse. They didn't have to buy it with almost anything. They just jumped over the wall and they knew Scuttler timed out. And definitely different for Rush. Obviously getting his team's objectives and playing well, but maybe seeing that Dominate's playing a little bit stronger this game. Rush has been on the counter for ganks behind Xiao Wei Xiao. They haven't been really promoting the kills for themselves. They've been playing it safe. Different from him. Yeah, I wonder if it's because it's against a warrior enchant jungler, and right. he knows that right. if they just take the time, they'll outscale. I know you talk about Liquid's comp overall, yeah. scaling really well, and Vlad and Vayne, I agree with you. I'm just wondering what sort of the decision choices there by Rush, but he's certainly not forcing almost anything, and they've been mm -hmm. into, into match lanes for a while yeah. now. He's not forcing anything, but TIP has this mid-game power spike around the Orianna, around the Gnar, so if they can press that advantage when the Callista turns online with two items, okay. hopefully it's a little bit before the main on Piglet for Impulse's sake, but right now you can see Dom going around. Oh, Ooh, he gets it. The knockup impact on a 200 health already. Of course, he's been stacking magic with this, so <laughs> Dominate's damage is massive there. And impact gets a bad recall. He can burn the TP to get back in, though, with Dragon down. You can see Rush. I don't know how comfortable he is on this Gragas just yet. The fact that he's showing up these lanes very late just to hold them, and then he uses his barrel to clear them and kind of pick up the experience in gold. But he's not in ganking positions at opportune right. times. He's not invading the jungle and pressing the power spikes of Gragas. Yeah, so at this point, not really trying to counter ganks, falling behind them a little bit. Had Quas been just a step closer, that would have been a kill on the impact. He's cleaning up duty. damage. Yeah, cleaning up, not a problem. 
Gragas is happy to get all the leftovers. Dom, back to the mid, though. Oh, right onto him. That barrier and flash is down. Remember, Xiao Wei Xiao just used it. These guys are trying to work that window. And now Impact teleporting himself to the mid lane. Here comes Quas. This is going to be a big Hemoplague if they're still grouped up. Quas just decides to hold the ultimate. They go for the quick kill. And it looks like he is going to be in a bad spot. Now he throws it down, hoping the rest of the team can collapse here. I don't know if this is going to be good. Hemo play goes off, and they keep following Impact. in. Impact's about Flash to hit Noir. by Special. Meganar oh! comes in. He's got the ulti for Quas. Pulls him back on the team. But rushes oh! the body slam. Either way, second kill comes in. Good start to Team Impulse. That's a really good start from them, because yeah. they want to keep this late game team from Liquid down as long as possible. And that was super smooth there. You saw the synergy there between the two Koreans on this team. Impact jumped off of Rush's head during the transform <laughs> to get him the extra distance. I gotta say, Sao Wei Sao's individual play right there was great as yeah. well. Duo Shockwave, well-timed barrier. Really didn't take any meaningful damage at all from this Team Liquid dive, and it just baited all the aggression in. And this is now Team Impulse. Have to mop up their lanes real quick, but overall, a big surge of gold means the next recall is going to be a lot of items. Like everybody got to participate in something on that one across the board, assists or kills. That's two for impact in the top lane. Somebody so looking for blood. Oh wow! Whoa, oh, Piglet. Piglet! I don't think he expected that one. The slow stays on from Ren, causing the flash, and it doesn't look good in that bottom lane either. I was just about to say the guy they banned out the most in impact now has two kills. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about this too because in the sets they're playing against TSM, impact still had champions yeah. who could carry the game on. You're banning three champions away from him. He still has Nar. He still has the Shivana. He still has things yeah. he can carry on. He's still got and that's Rumble. scary. They will. They usually ban the Rumble away from him. It's Rumble Morgana Hecarim that oh, they're yeah, banning that the away. Thing. Okay. So, but that's the thing is his champion pool is so deep, and he's so good at all these champions with the carry potential. If you give him kills mm -hmm. like this, he could take over the game very quickly. And, and to touch on that interaction in the bottom lane, actually, Piglet had Blade of the Rune King completed, but Apollo was staying out of the range of it by hopping backwards every time. Yeah. Just champion interaction as well. I mean, mm -hmm. percent health damage not exactly amazing against uh, other marks. But <laughs> the reason Ruin King Vayne works so well in the duel lane is because it gives you chasing power. You're typically a better duelist by being Vayne, but she's pretty much matched in that regard by the fact that she's facing a Kalista yeah. with a bunch of attack damage is going to be better in that kind of a duel. And if this snowballs at all any more for Apollo, Piglet cannot ever fight him back. Trying to see where the priorities lie in a vision right now. Obviously, double sight stone to the side of Liquid as they are trying to repair a bit of this bleeding that <clears throat> Impulse put in the beginning of the game. Mid lane has pretty much been the focus here with the 2v1. We're still waiting with Adrian making the plays. He's kind of mobilized himself with boots instead of that sight stone first. He's been trying to get to that mid lane. So you can kind of see where these guys came out of the gate from. Adrian yeah. trying to make plays. Dominate's really been trying to make moves here on this damage or Xi coming out of the jungle. And you can see Team Liquid's priorities as well. They've realized that Piglet's losing this duo lane yeah. against this Kalista. So true. props to Apollo and Adrian first off for that one. But the fact that Liquid needs Piglet to get ahead, they swap into the top lane. I wouldn't be surprised if he just froze it for a while. Even though Dragon's coming up in a minute, they might just have to sacrifice Dragon just to get Piglet caught up in levels and gold, which will mean Dragon for Impulse. Right. And it means that Quas gets the crappy one on two lane because they just care more about Piglet here. Tilting these lanes, the solo lanes, are very important for Team Liquid. And the fact that Impact has two kills and can deal with Quas still is big because this team composition wants to 1 3 1 Zed, Vladimir, and solo lanes and yeah. group everybody else down mid. But TIP have guys who can still deal with these solo laners who want to split push when that pattern starts coming down. And they have enough engage with Orianna, Gragas, Nar, all these guys, including Kalista, have ways to start a fight on the three members who are grouped. So Team Liquid have to play the rest of this game onward perfectly. If they make any mistakes, Impulse can immediately capitalize on it right. with very little margin for error. I absolutely agree. And you can see that actually Impulse still searching for the matchup. They sent Kalista top lane and right away Piglet recalls away, but then Impulse will be a little bit slow to this Dragon. They're just recalling their AD carry now. Dragon comes up in four seconds. You talked about the engage power and the fact that Liquid can't make any mistakes. I agree. I don't think even though Liquid could be first to Dragon, I don't think they can start it because they're so easily Fought by Impulse here. Dominic comes to the bottom side anyway, but I don't know how this 5v5 could be won. Yeah, there's a lot of choke point pressure, Thresh box, Oriana ball pressure, and Gragas just zoning people. It's really hard to get into the Dragon once TIP is in there first. Yep. 
And Phoenix building a build that's going to be more about the burst. So sometimes we see Hex Drinker from Zed if they're afraid of the magic damage output. Doesn't have that here, so Shy Wei Shao chunks him out easily. Team Impulse, here they go. On this side of the map, Quas was sent top, which is just going to get him a little bit of farm. Impulse going to get the very safe standard dragon off a of 2k gold lead thanks to their advantages. And they once again find this two on two where Callista can beat up Vayne. Oh. Hanging off on the side here. Oh, That's the wall. Oh. oh, pins him to the wall. Does he get the trophy too? Take oh, the lantern. Depth oh. charge as well. Oh. Piglet sticks up Apollo. Gets himself a necessary kill. It's that lockup. It's all that CC from Nautilus. That was so absolutely beautiful. Big playmaking by Piglet. He's going to earn a turret for this one as well, which is going to bring the gold practically back to equal. So Team Liquid yep. giving up some of that deficit within 400 gold. There's a reason he has a skin of himself on this champion. <laughs> He's not using it, but there's He's a being reason. Humble. Doesn't want to brag too much here. Being humble. Oh, that'll be his secondary skin, apparently. Coming out big with the kill there. 20 CS up as well, even though he's been pushed out of lane. It actually, when we were we said, ooh, and he got pushed out and flashed earlier, him staying alive there was gigantic because he stayed in lane, he got the XP, and he's still up in CS. So for that kill to not go to Apollo was actually very, very big. His flash for Piglet almost back up, so he can keep going ham if he wants to. A little bit of focus here on the top lane for Impact, who hasn't really gone for too much armor. Yeah, he's got the Ninja Tabbies, but if Piglet gets here with Quas, it might turn the tides of what he's got to mitigate that damage. He's counter-building lane because he thinks that Vladimir's going to be trying to split right, the entire right. game. So he wants to be able to handle him and duel him. I actually love that point that Crumbs brought up there, where he was talking about how Rush, the, just him being in the game causes Team Liquid to respect him and not go too deep for dives and ganks. That's pretty big, but Rush hasn't done too much with that. He's been late to the ganks. He's been late to the counter ganks. It doesn't seem like typical Rush on this champion. It's, it's one of those things that the other team will figure out and then add yeah. on. I mean, now, if you're like, if you're not afraid of the Rush Gragas whatsoever, and it seems like so far he's not done a whole lot, this yeah. is, yeah, it could be a very good thing for Team Liquid to continue to feel aggressive. We're also seeing Liquid continue to play the rotational game very well. They're down in Dragons. They were down in Golden, yet this is the team who's able to push turrets all around the map. Slow play by Team Impulse to not match a lot of these moves. Apollo try to make some solo plays. He's got the lifesteal to beat Quaston on one-on-one. -on -one. But I don't know if he can get a lot of turret pressure down when Phoenix and Dom could always flank around him. All right, Zyrene. Will finished. Dominate finished his item. Two blades. What do you want? Well, what should we see Team Liquid be doing, rather? You should see them as soon as they get Yomu's power spikes, if they go for them, mm -hmm. group up and have those mid-game fights. But... It's really hard to take a mid-game fight against this team. As soon as Rush completes a Righteous Glory, you have to be in a position where you know you can start the fight before they do. Right. So the split pushes and taking turrets is probably what Team Liquid's going to go for. Because they have options right now at this point in the game. Well, they've definitely closed a bit of the gold gap that they had earlier. And that's when Team Impulse starts to fall behind when they're not the one in the lead. Only a small lead right now for Liquid, but they are now starting to get those forward wards. Maybe something that won't make them so cautious against those ganks with Rush off in the dark fog of war. Yeah, Expecial's actually going to go for his own Righteous Glory here, too. So that'll give them the yeah. option to help start fights on Team Liquid's side. It's going to be very interesting how this mid-game kind of hashes out. Well, both teams definitely giving each other respect as they come yeah. into this game. Yeah. We see pretty much the same compositions they've been bringing out. Nobody trying anything crazy, even though we say they have a bit of room yeah. to work with game one out of a best of five series. And it looks like Impulse really knew how to stop Team Liquid in the beginning here, but Team Liquid's mid-game is something they have been buckling down on quite a bit. Well, they're going straight for this tower while Zed is bottom and Vayne Piglet's out of position right now. They're just going to force this very quickly. Team Impulse have a little bit of time. Zed is not going to reach the Tier 2 turret just yet, and the pressure is still coming in quite nicely. Piglet zoned off to the side as well. You mentioned earlier Impulse counter-building all the various lanes, and I agree right. if Impulse were to just like m straight match the... Uh, the split push, I think it would be just fine for them, but the ability to group up, like before the Righteous Glory is finished there for Expecial, I think there's still more tools in the hands of Team Impulse here. So they're the team I'm really watching to see how well they can play aggressively. And the big test for them, to me, is the fact that this has been a win-lane-win game team for the most part. That right. They win yeah. their games in 25 minutes because they win their lanes so hard and just, just randomly push and things fall over. When they were tested severely by Team Solomid, it was a, a much slower game by them. They, they didn't have very crisp rotations. They weren't able to play the map quite properly here. And up against Team Liquid, who's happy to split push them, who's happy to put pressure in various different lanes, I want to see how well Impulse can react to this. And you were talking about win lane, win game. 
if they don't win lane, they still play like they're going to win the game. Yeah. They never roll over. They always try to team fight you. And that's a little scary here with this team composition because they have ways to constantly fight you on TIP's side. So if Liquid do ever get a lead, their wave clear is rather poor. They're down to split pushing. Their core unit of three, if they do go for the 1-3-1 or even just have four people, is always vulnerable to the hard engage. Yeah. Vayne, Rek'Sai, Nautilus, uh, not really that durable, right? Fighter, jungler who went lock at second, so even squishier. Not all support, just not going to be thinking for a long time. Really, only Alistair and Leon get to hold that moniker early on in the game. 43 seconds on the next Dragon. Impulse, I still feel like, should feel like the stronger team on the map right now. Yeah. I want to see if Apollo can finish Hurricane in time, though. He's 200 gold short on the combine, which would be a sorely missed breakpoint. Yeah. We might see Impulse delay a little bit of time to try to get him that item before they fight. It's kind of like the old saying we used to have for LMQ that kind of follows into Impulse. It's the thing that makes them win can be the thing that also makes them lose, and that's always wanting to fight. Rush, we saw that before on his new new flashing in for Ice Blast and yeah. an absolute zero just to keep someone in range for a second, and it didn't kind of work out here. A little more calm, cool, and collected, and it's really working out for yep. them to keep in a steady game. But Impulse are first to Dragon. Even though they're standing on top of the Rift Scuttling, they've got some deep wards mm -hmm. inside the jungle. They can see Team Liquid come in on them. Phoenix is Still gone. no Righteous Glory. It's hard for Liquid to start this fight, so Impulse rush it down. Phoenix is a little far away from this fight. If it gets engaged before he's there, it's going to be trouble. That's going to be big. The hook onto a special, and he doesn't have much armor to be in that fight for too long. Hemo Plague's down. They're going to have to assess the damage after this happens. And it looks like they still want it. Phoenix goes straight in. That's onto Apollo. Looks like he's going to live with the lifesteal up. And he is back there with Adrian Whoa. getting all the help. Adrian's like, peace out, man. I got your lantern if you need it. But he's not going to take it. They're all Dominate, back into the fight try together. For something he here. goes in. Apollo. It's going to be a 3v1. Whoa, Dominate. Boy. He is trying to do just that to this. There's one. Trying to go for a second one now. There's not too much damage to follow up. The Lantern of the Dark Passage saves Rush. And it looks like Dominate does not have enough follow-up. We are going to see Quas kind of hovering around the top side here if anybody else were to come to the fight. But it doesn't look like they're going to achieve too much more from this. A teleport, however, to the bottom lane here from Impact. Oh, they're they may up. recall to the fight. Impact's in now, and this could be bad for Dominate. He's trying oh, to call the run. Oh, he gets knocked oh. out of it, and Dominate goes oh. a little too far. Pop goes to Rek'Sai, and they come up with another kill. The Goomba stomp there <laughs> at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fact he's able to get that damage off. It's interrupted by damage, the Void Rush. Right. So he's yeah, able anything, to just get that yeah. one hit in there. That hook, before Phoenix is ready to start this fight, Expecial doesn't have anything to play. say here. He doesn't even get his ultimate off in this fight. Right. Let alone a flash or ignite. The Hemo Plague was good, but the fact that nobody was there to follow up on the damage, it. wow. it's all about, like, the Hemo Plague is about increasing the percent damage that people take. It was yeah. solely used for just the burst damage on by itself there. No follow up. Good positioning, <laughs> but the fact that they weren't able to follow up and Phoenix wasn't there was bad. And Expecial getting caught. And absolutely amazing mechanics by the Team Impulse crew. They're playing yeah. around Apollo a lot here, to be honest. I know Impact's got all the kills, but Apollo's a big centerpiece. Impact flashed back just to make sure he could land Gnar on the diving Zed. Like, these guys were so ready for everything Liquid would do in the team fight. I'm still surprised Liquid chose the battle. They were late, they didn't have vision, their team fight comp's not as good. They tried anyway. And Liquid have to do a lot of soul searching and how to get back in this game. Their wave clear is pretty bad. Their defensive, you know, sort of posture is not going to be very good here. And Impulse, ca again, counter building all the lanes and having yeah. to fed AD carry. All the tools, once again, are with the blue team. I like what you mentioned about their fight, because if you, you do look at it, it's actually, it looks like one of the hardest fights to coordinate, because people are bouncing around, getting thrown out, <laughs> getting chucked around by Fate's Call, getting hit by Shockwave, so. You're going to be missing or either hitting everything. It's a kind of a high risk, high reward it's there. It's a welcome to the bounce house whenever you show up <laughs> in the Team Impulse. You know what's funny? Every single person on Impulse can make someone else on Team Liquid move around. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they can bounce house the entire enemy team. That's so difficult to yep. deal with. How do you think you start a party? Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Just push them around. It's a mosh pit. Get everybody to move. Oh, yep. Apollo. A little danger towards that bottom, but he'd be okay as he comes back up with the team. 30 minutes coming up on the clock. 5 to 2 as we're kind of still crawling along in this one. Yeah, we're crawling along, but Xiao Xiao's farm isn't. It's 27 minutes in. He's at 316. <laughs> oh, when is it ever? He is 60 CS up over his lane opponent, Phoenix. They put resources into Xiao Xiao. They gave him a farm-oriented yeah. champion, and they gave him ways to get the ball in there and get his damage done. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Okay, Peglet. You're 1 and 0, but you're facing Thornmail Randuin's Ninja Tabby. I, if Peglet can win this fight, then good for him. He wanted to beat his ex-teammate. 
<laughs> so badly. Like, this is the thing. If you go for it and you lose, everybody's watching. Well, impact. No longer a dinosaur. Now just oh. in a onesie. Now just in the onesie. It's a threatening onesie, though. Better back off. It's got boomerangs, man. He's out. Best He's be safe. careful. Oh, hello. Yep. All right. Very impulse-like, <laughs> if you will. Well, there's They're no, there's no vision this. of it yet. Dom has to check this. Oh, Seeker. Didn't quite hit. He has a sight stone. He has wards. Man. See you later, alligator. They make it out clean. And it does not look like there's going to be any fighting coming from Team Liquid on this one. No contest for the Baron. And Impact works small leads very well. Let's see how they get this one with this fight comp. They're just going to start pushing down mid. But oh, yeah. how are you going to clear these waves that are barren up on a low wave clear team? Yeah. You're not going to be able to on Team Liquid. They're going to get free turrets for this Baron. You can see Dominate goes over just to clear a wolf camp. He knows he can't fight for anything. <laughs> Impulse, they could split push a win. They could group his five and win. Almost anything is going to work here for Impulse. This comp is going to work so well while ahead. As long as they can peel for Zed. Here he goes onto Apollo. Gonna get exhausted up. Dominate into the back line. Still looking for this AD carry, but Apollo refuses to go oh. down. First kill comes off as Dominate falls over. Oh. He's forced back into the back lines. A special one hit away from Gaunt storming oh, away. They've actually managed to trade that one kill back onto Rush, but a Piglet will trade back as well. Two for two. Quas goes Whoa. down to a dissonance. Nice damage, Ooh. and now it's gonna be Impulse inside the base. That's all that farm right there. Chunking Vladimir out, and they're gonna get an inhibitor for that. There's no way you can clear these waves on Team Liquid's side. The fact that they drafted this comp that's about, all about split pushing and they never got into the split push pattern because of the team fight potential of TIP is really, really big uh, right off the draft. It gets harder and harder. Still, again, looking at the impulse composition, you talk about the wave clear. Everything impulse can start with is beyond that wave clear as well. You got a Gragas Barrel, you got the Oriana ultimate mm -hmm. coming in and impact. He's not afraid to throw his entire body into the fight as Meganar, so things aren't looking good here. Game one for Team Liquid definitely needed to be ahead by this point. Yeah, they immediately go onto Apollo, and it looks like they have the flank here, but Phoenix already snapped back to his shadow, and Rush engages on the opposite side. Xiao Wei Xiao is just dealing damage in the back line. He is completely fine, and you can see he starts chunking people out here. The hook on oh, that piglet wow. for the pickup was absolutely amazing there. He loses his life for it, but it's completely worth because it allows them to get that inhibitor and get more pressure on the map that Team Liquid can't deal with. Yeah, so Team Impulse in control for Dragon 4 very easily. They've still got a minute left on Baron, so they can knock down at least another inhibitor yeah. turret, I would say, is probably what I would expect during the duration of this Baron buff to get what they want here. I also got to point out that one rush death that he has now in this game was him playing like he did in the TSM game where he would just like <laughs> flash in a turret and be like, oh, I didn't kill you. All right, well, so close. good luck my team. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we got 30 minutes in and Rush just went back to his old form. Uh, you're, you're a tank jungler. Tendencies. You're not like you're not Lee Sin. You know, you're you just got to be a little bit more careful, dude. Oh, well, that's the thing that comes with repetition and playing that champion a whole bunch is learning the damage output up yeah. on yeah. uncertain play, uncertain chance. Other champions, certain right. enemies. Knowing those boundaries, mm -hmm. with the boundaries of Gragas, they're actually pretty big. Waist size boundaries. <laughs> <are all big. laughs> 31 minutes on, they do not care about what's happening behind the Looking turret. Now the fight's coming out front. Phoenix goes right in, calls actually back to the ultimate shadow, so he's not providing any more damage. The Hemo Plague is only going to tickle Impulse at this point, and Impact is just having a field day underneath and inside the base. He gets finally taken. Oh, he's he still does alive. No, what? What? Oh, wow. wow in the world. He gets alive. A little bit of the hyper gets him to safety. Now on to dominate. Good kills come in there as well. And Team Impulse just assess the fight perfectly, are unable to clean up Liquid. Piglet's going to go oh. down. Can he make it in the door? Jumped over oh. by Impact. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Using the front door for an escape and an attack mechanism, but he finally goes down. Phoenix is the last one left to watch the base fall. It's a four for two. Impulse have super minions on top of Nexus turrets right now, but looks like they're afraid of Zed killing him back. So drop the inhibitor, get back out of the base. Team Liquid did surprisingly well on that fight, though. A four for two and against Baron buff, against a team that's up like 10,000 gold in you practically. Yeah. Pretty well fought by Team Liquid, and good job putting so much pressure on Apollo that he couldn't hit people very often. But at this point, just the gold lead is almost too much to bear. Yeah. Take, taking advantage of a little craziness by Impulse there. <laughs> yeah, and Apollo now has his QSS completed. This again. fight, he didn't. And he's the priority target here. They used everything on him. And now he has the QSS, so he'll be able to get rid of these status effects at this point in time. So he's flashing away. They're putting so much into him. And this is a team that you don't think has a lot of peel. But they have a Nar. They have a Grogis. They have so many tools, plus the Orianna shield, to actually keep Apollo safe 
they actually give up going for Apollo and swap to Xiao Wei Xiao halfway through the fight, and they don't kill either of them at the start. Another thing is they aren't following up the Hemo Plague very well from Quas. Quas is laying that down, but then the damage right. has already been Everybody kind of just got out of the fight. Yeah, well, I guess mean, kind of the problem with the team composition is, is really you don't have any indiscriminate target seekers. Zed can only look for one person. It's got to be very opportunistic. Ooh, Piglet also has to be very, very opportunistic. So you, you can't guarantee that you knock down whoever Vlad's hitting. You don't have a Karthus or a Kennen or something that's going to just hit everybody and make sure that damage works out. So right. uh, yeah, I'm not necessarily sold on the Vlad right now. They picked it for the flex, but looks like a great play by Team Impulse to play yeah. around the champion quite nicely. And Impulse, they're going for all three inhibitors here to just put that nail in the coffin in this game one and give themselves that momentum. Once they get that lead, they make it quite textbook. Right around the horn, now the final inhibitor turret's going to be going down. Let's see if Fate's Call can be thrown anywhere here for Adrian. Looks like they're all staying on the back line. Safety in this as well. They know they have the lead, but they're in Ooh, no what? hurry. I lied. Xiao Wei Xiao's in a hurry. But it actually doesn't matter. He's so far ahead in farm <laughs> that he does so much damage with his command attacks and dissonance. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's still threatening. It's true. They're like three to 500 damage every yeah. few seconds. It just doesn't hitting matter. Face. At the it's pretty painful, especially with that blue buff on. He's moving it just about every two seconds. So they'll back. Impulse knows they have time to work with here. And this bodes very well for the mentality. They know what it's like to have that clean sweep come around. So they're going to stay strong throughout their wins. We'll see if Team Liquid can as well assess what happened here and start thinking about game two. We heard that actually if you watch the team uh, solo mid video online. That's what they said as soon at the end of game one against Impulse is just think about game two. Forget about this. We got to figure out what Impulse is going to do. And it was a convincing win by Impulse. It was. Game one yes, it was. ESM. That Being play. able to keep your cool head is something that Liquid has been trying to work on and getting reverse sweep multiple times. They need yeah. to be able to learn the best five format and keep their mentality up even when a game strikes you this hard. And of course, there's many ways for Team Liquid to play the rest of the series as well. If they can't, you know, hold on to this game right here, it's good to see that they're willing to play on the carry. Nice Glory. Come in. There's the engage on in towards Phoenix. Apollo takes a whole bunch of CC, but the comes actually in towards Rush. That's the death mark target, but down goes down. Takes to a great Nar in from Impact of the top lane. It's a one for one though, as Adrian did fall. Quas buying a lot of time. Piglet hitting whomever he can. Impact is on. He's looking for his next teammate. Oh, hit the, oh. Oh, the kill picked out the <laughs> shutdown for Piglet. It's a two for one for Team Liquid, by the way. The durability and the elusiveness of Vladimir and Vayne allowing them to pick up a couple of kills without going down. Very, very hectic and sloppy team fight there from both sides. The peel looked like it was just completely absent. Everybody's just going at each other's throats. The main target at the start was Apollo. Didn't even take any damage after that. It looked like yep. a feint, and then they immediately went on to Adrian from Team Liquid's side. Really interesting fight. Baron is live, too. So with the oh, team members down, Quas is going to clear waves, and they're going to try to use the right double right. Blade of the Ruined King for yeah. 10 HP damage and the True Silver Bolts. But here's the thing is there's so much damage, AoE damage, AoE disruption from the two members who are right here on your screen. Impact has teleport. He's alive in four seconds. Right. And he can probably buy a home guard if he wanted to on this one. He could sell something, whatever. Looks like there's not going to be an attempt. Quas holding the bottom lane. Liquid only just going for the ward control here. But they do force Impulse to respect this side of the map. And the ward battle continues here. Honestly, Dragon 5, by the way, is respawning in five seconds. Impulse honestly could give Baron for a Dragon and just use that to push the game in. Definitely could be something on the plate. A little bit of time here to be person. waited for both teams. It, it's a little risky, though. Oh! Oh, oh he's going all oh, the way! He's at the end! He didn't think he had it! Phoenix could be caught here. He throws down the Ghost Blade. He's going to get a little extra movement speed and get to safety. But that could be the window for five here. That could be what they needed. They have to fight this. There's going to be a team fight right now that's going to start. It's now or never. Fox comes in, and special to the front line, too, doesn't help, they're staying on to Baron, dominate, does not win this fight, oh. it's gonna be Apollo, and Dom will lose his life for this one, it's gonna be one for zero to start, Impact tanking up in the front lines, multiple kills coming through, Liquid losing their lineup, nice stun Ooh. to Quas, a double kill for Apollo, time for the game winning push. Getting the Dragon 5 in the middle of the team fight is what gave them that extra boost on top of everything else. They didn't even have to fight over the Baron, because if Team Liquid got the Baron, a split push team with that is very deadly. But look at that, Adrian wants more. More Watch indeed. Them. The Shockwave goes down, it's special as well. Has the same fate. Piglet's going to be the next one to go, and they will take this along with the Minion Wave to Nexus Turrets. An ace onto Team Liquid to close out game one. Eight? 18 to 8 as they approach 40 minutes into the game. They got their gold lead. They pushed that gold lead and the advantage 
brings them game one in this best of five series. 100% kill participation for Adrian. And Rush, despite not making a lot of early game moves, still ends up dictating a lot of the late game. That's right. Team Impulse take down Team Liquid for game one. The team fighting of Team Impulse. You can see the styles coming out here. Impulse picking a team fight standard composition, the Orianna mid, yeah. the Gnarlty, all that. The lowest kill participation on the team was 16 of 18. Yeah. There were no solo kills here <laughs> for the most part. It was all about grouping up, playing the dragons, playing the turrets. Impulse did that largely very well. Team yeah. Liquid, they tried to make some split pushes happen. The Vladimir, even though she's a, he's a good team fighter, doesn't synergize well with Vayner Z. True damage, not amplified, right? All those kinds of fun things. Right. So they, play, they picked for split pushing. Team Liquid picked for split pushing. Yeah. And yet the Impulse, the win lane, win game team, they picked a strong bot lane, they picked a strong mid lane, they picked a strong top lane, even blind picking these, and they won those lanes. So the split push never came out for Team Liquid. Impulse played the game they wanted to. They were always first to Dragon. They were always first to the big objectives, yep. and it was a well-played game. There's a couple of good things here for TIP. One, they didn't have to rely on Rush winning them the early game. They played to their strengths in Champion Select and as a team and a unit. And the big thing here as well is everybody showed that they're reliable, and when they play their game, Team Liquid has to match them. Yeah. Yeah, Team Liquid had to match the Team Impulse team fight style. Right. Well played by Tip to do that. I also want to point out, like, this game had like an 8,000 gold deficit for the last 10 minutes, yep. and Liquid still had a series of good team fights. That's true. Which that last top and hit fight was a little scary that scattered down in the mid lane. TIP, they don't usually seem to assess the team fights, yep. whether they're behind or ahead. They just go for the team fights if they can pop the Righteous Glory and start it. The thing is, there were so many moments that were well played by Team Impulse. Specifically, yeah. uh, there was a moment Apollo took a Nautilus ultimate, and walk to a wall. He's like, Zed's gonna ult me, and I'm gonna let you get Gnar ulted. And actually, Impact missed that Gnar ult right after in that team fight, which is kind of a big deal. But it forced the Zed to snap back immediately after. Right, but that was so cool, is, is like, even though these fights are like starting and it's a bunch of you know, hectic assassins trying to dive through and do all these crazy things from Team Liquid, all the tip members are like ready for it, and they're like, we, they already know like what these guys are trying to do. Uh, yeah, they're already ready to, you know, walk him into the wall, pop the gnarl, like Inside all this stuff. Mind. It's really <laughs> impressive how Team mind Impulse bullets. are playing those, those team fights as well. We'll see if they can fire off more of those mind <laughs> bullets here as we get into game two, or proceed to game two. Let's see what our analysts make of Impulse's first.